Good morning. What a blessing day we have here today to serve the Lord. Welcome to the Cornerstone Chapel. At this time, we will have scripture and prayer by Reverend Betty Sims. Thank you, Reverend Sims, for that scripture and a beautiful prayer. And again, I want to say good morning. Uh, we're going through some trying times now. Uh, during this time, last year, year before last, we probably never thought we would be going through the things that we're going through today. we would have probably thought this was something that we saw on a movie. We have COVID-19, a disease that we can't see. Now we have violence in the streets. A whole lot of things is going on, but God is still in charge. We must remember that God is in charge. We also must remember that we have no control over things that God has already planned. Our scripture lesson this morning will be coming from Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13. And I would read it. And it reads thusly. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but you liked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, there will to be content, to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that this message that you have given to me, that I'll be only a vessel, that it pass from you through me to the listener, and that it may be received. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that something be said here today that will help someone and help this nation through these trying times. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. 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 With this text, it's obvious what the writer is stating, that we need to be content. Regardless of the situations we're in, regardless of what's going on in our nation or what's going on in this world, we still need to be content. The Bible instructs us in this text to find contentment. It dominates all four of these verses. Now, does that mean everything going to go the way we want? No. But what it does mean is that we need to be in content no matter what the situation is. This situation with people burning towns that their forefathers had built. This this situation with COVID-19, we don't know where it came from. We can't even see it. But we know it's affecting our family, our friends, and our neighbors. But we know one thing. As a Christian, we know that God is in charge. And when God gets ready to stop it, God will stop it. When God gets ready to stop what's going on in this country, he will stop it. We have no control of that. It's only in God's hands. The word content is only found one time in the Bible, and that's in verse 11 of what I just said, what I just read. And what it means is to have enough and not to be in need or want of something. In other words, what we have right now, we have to be content with it. The situation we're in right now, we have to be content with it. Yes. If we try to do anything ourselves, we may end up doing something that harm ourselves. God wants us to be content. That's what he was telling Paul to tell the Philippians people to be content in whatever state they may be in. It's important that we be, be content. Why? Because if we content, then it's a lot of things that we can prevent from happening to our body, our soul, our mind. If we're not content, none of we're going to be stressed out about something. And stress brings on diseases. It brings on sickness. And if it continues, it will bring on death of the body. That is not what we want. That's why we have to be content. I had a person that I met who had been to Africa. And they looked at the people that was there. They didn't have a whole lot. But what she said, she noticed about those people, they were making do with what they had. They was content in the situation that God had put them in. And they had the faith. And that's what we have to do here in these United States and the whole world that's going through this virus. COVID-19 is something that has taken a lot of lives. It has taken lives here in the United States and all around the world. We can't blame our neighbor. We can't blame our friend. We can't blame our wife. We can't blame our husband. We can't blame our children. God is in control of what's happening here. Even the ones with all the degrees, Got all the titles. 
They have no clue of what God is doing here, but what God going to do. God going to pull all this together and we will see it. But in the meantime, we have to be content. See, we are Christians. We are believers. And we already know that everything that happens, God either allows it to happen because God is omnipotent. God, God has all power. No man has the power. No woman has the power. It's God that has the power. But what God does he does empower us to do certain things. And he's also the one that put the scientists here. So the scientists, the lawyer, or whoever's here have to still depend on God. Paul, here in this passage, demonstrates this passage that Christians' solution to a lack of compassion Contentment is different from the non-believer. A non-believer don't think like we think when it comes to contentment. See, we know that God is in charge. We know that God can bring us out. We know that this is what God wants us to do is to stand fast. You know, this is what God wants us to do. God wants us to be right here doing what God wants us to do. To continue to have faith in God. To continue to love one another. And to continue to love God. This is not a time for us to get mad with each other. Or do anything to harm each other. The time right now is for us to pull more closer together. Even though the church doors may not be open. We can reach out to each other and love one another. Look what this situation has done for us. We have learned more about each other than we ever did when we was going into the church building. Ain't that something? Because we communicate more now. That's what God wants for us to do. God is going to make a change. I heard a sermon this morning where it ain't nothing going to be like it used to be. That's right. Things going to change after all this. God going to change it. You will never see the same thing you have before February, March, any again. God going to take us in a different direction. And this direction is all about us loving one another and doing what he said in the first and second commandment. Right. Love God and love your neighbor. That's right. See, we had got above that. Mm. See, what God wants us to do now is to get back to that. Yes. He wants to get back to that love. That said, when a friend or a family member or your neighbor say they need something, you don't turn your back and walk away yes. from it. If they say they would like to have some, you go in and you got it, you make sure you go and get it, you give it to them. That's the thing that God is putting back to us now. We need to love one another. Continue to love one another. It is so beautiful when you see a sister and a brother that is here hugging and loving one another. See, right now, he's not going to let us hug nobody. He stopped us from doing that because, see, we wasn't doing it for love. We was doing it because everybody else was doing it. But see, what God has done now, he has touched the heart. He working with the heart. There's still some people got some hard hearts. But I tell you what, when his boys for it said and done from the White House all the way down to the Lord's country, they're going to bow. And say, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. See how things are changing every day. Things are changing. Nowadays, you didn't even know what could be happening. Contentment. Are you content 
with what you have. The basic needs of life. The highest one is love and God. Because see, God is love. So that's the highest one. Mil Maslow said something about you got certain needs that you have to have to live. But at the top of that, that pyramid is love. In the Bible, at the top of the Bible, God said we must love one another in order to be content. Now, does that mean we're going to get along all the time? No. Are we going to agree about everything? No. But one thing we're going to do is love one another. And that's what God wants. Contentment comes by remembering the Lord. I'm going to give you three C's and then I'm going to sit down. The first C is contentment comes by remembering the Lord providence in our lives. God put events in our lives that we have to be content. If we don't be content with these things, we destroy ourselves. Our daily life has a lot of things going on. Don't you remember before all this coronavirus and we would be out on the highway, somebody cut us off, somebody throw up a finger at us and we get angry and when some people would even chase them down. See, God put us here to think about all these things. So when you go back to work again and that happened, the Lord going to say, don't even worry about it. If it happens, because God is touching those ones too. Even the ones that's out there may be doing things and demonstrating and doing things right now in the streets and tearing up the countryside and tearing up the city. God is touching them too. This is going to be a change. God is going to change it. He reminds us that we must remember God provides us in our circumstances and all our circumstances. I don't care what it is. Whether we got pain in our knees, pain in our hips, pain in our elbows, God provides for us. We have to thank God for that pain, even though it hurts. And the second C, contentment comes by refusing. And this, you can find this in verses 11 through 12 of the scripture. Contentment comes by refusing to focus on our circumstances. In other words, even though we may have pain, even though we may have a wayward child, parent, or whatever, we don't just focus on that negatively. We focus on it in a positive, loving manner. That's what God wants us to do. Don't just focus on the bad things. When we focus on bad things, bad things happen. When we focus on positive things, positive things happen. During the same time here of this text, Paul was facing financial duress. But he said, I am not in want, moreover, 
He states, I have learned to be content. He was broke, but he was still content. Why? Because God was still providing. If you go back early on in the chapter in, in, in Philippians, you see where the Philippian people provided him with financial assistance. They was called his special people. Not only because they provided him with financial assistance, because they were good Christians. It's a growth process when we can be contented in situations in situations that is not really good. That's how we grow. We learn from every mistake we make. Even if you go back to your elementary school teacher or your middle school teacher and even a high school teacher, they will say, what did you learn? What did you learn when you was going through this? Now, this COVID-19, what are we going to learn? What are we learning? We should be learning to be content. We should be learning to humble ourselves because if we don't, it still ain't going to change the situation until God mean for it to change. Con contentment is not to achieve the right circumstances. Contentment may be enjoyed in spite of circumstances. Content should not be depend on circumstances. Contentment should transcend circumstances. Circumstances are like the tides of the ocean. It waves up and down, up and down. In other words, they're never going to be the same. Circumstances are like the weather. One day, it's sunny. The next day, it's cold. Or the next day, it's raining. Or the next day, it may be snowing. We never know what God's going to do. Even the weatherman don't know. Matter of fact, the weatherman, and if you got the Alexis, will tell you stories that never happen. But God knows. The last sea comes by relying on the Lord. Contentment comes by relying on the Lord. That's what we have to do. And you find that in verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When we think through these principles of contentment. Let's remember that Paul not only taught them the Philippian people, but also embodied them. May, do, may we do the same and apply these three principles to live a contented life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message that you have given to me. And dear Holy Father, I hope that someone got something out of it that we can start if we're not already living a contented life. Yes. Contentment brings back peace of mind. 
It brings joy into our life. Remember, whatever state we may be in, it let us know that you are there with us. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.